My name is David DeLuca. I'm a senior storage solutions architect at Amazon Web Services. I'm here to talk about a recent enhancement to AWS DataSync, which enables you to perform fully automated data transfers between Amazon storage services with just a few clicks in the DataSync console. Let's get started. AWS DataSync is an online data transfer service that simplifies, automates, and accelerates moving data between on-premises storage systems and AWS storage services. DataSync allows fast data transfer, it is easy to use, it is secure and reliable, it is a fully managed AWS service, and it is cost-effective. In addition to transferring data between your on-premises storage and AWS storage services, DataSync can also transfer data between Amazon storage services. These include Amazon S3, Amazon EFS, and Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. This enables you to easily replicate data between your managed file systems for business continuity, as well as copy portions of your data to different buckets or file systems as needed by evolving application requirements. Using the AWS DataSync console, command line interface, or software development kit, you can easily configure fully automated data transfer tasks between AWS storage services without managing in-cloud infrastructure. Let's move on to a demonstration of this feature. Here we are in the AWS Management Console. Before we get started with DataSync, I want to take a moment to show the source and target that I'll use for this demonstration. The source will be this S3 bucket, which is located in the US East 1 Northern Virginia region. It contains several objects as well as folder prefixes. I intend to only copy objects in the documentation folder prefix which contains a mix of PowerPoint, PDF, and a few other file types. My target is this S3 bucket, which is located in US West 1, Northern California. As you can see, it is currently empty. Now let's launch DataSync. From the DataSync introduction screen, Navigate to the Create a Data Transfer Task box. For this demonstration, let's select Between AWS Storage Services and click Get Started. On the Configure Source Location screen, we will create a new location. From the drop down list, you select the location type, and DataSync will automatically populate the names of available resources in the selected region. For example, if I select Amazon EFS, I see that there is an EFS file system available in this region. I can do the same for FSx for Windows File Server. For this demonstration, let's select Amazon S3. Here is my source bucket. Instead of transferring the entire bucket, we will only copy the contents of the documentation folder prefix. We also need to select or auto-generate an IAM role, which will grant permission to this S3 bucket. Let's click Next to continue. On the Configure Destination Location screen, let's create another new location. DataSync allows you to select the region. In this example, the target location is US West 1, Northern California. Once again, DataSync will automatically populate the name of available storage resources in this region. This is the target S3 bucket. You can select any S3 storage class at the destination. You also have the option of writing to a specific folder prefix within the destination bucket. Let's enter a forward slash to indicate that we want to write to the root of that bucket. And once again, we select or auto-generate an IAM role in order to grant permission to this S3 bucket. Let's click Next to continue. On the Configure Settings page, you can name the task. There are options on data verification, whether to keep deleted files, 
and how to handle overwriting files. There is also an option to set a bandwidth limit. Let's talk for a moment about the use case for S3 to S3 data transfer using DataSync. There are a number of mechanisms to copy data between S3 buckets, including S3 replication and batch operations. To learn more about when to use which product, you can consult the DataSync frequently asked questions. In this case, I chose to use DataSync because I wanted to only replicate a portion of the bucket. Also, I did not want to enable versioning on the buckets. And finally, I wanted to make use of the filter option. For example, let's exclude all PowerPoint files. Under task logging, it is highly recommended to choose log all transferred objects and files. These logs will go to a CloudWatch log group called AWS DataSync. Let's click Next to continue. The task shows that it is available. We simply click Start to execute it. Our task is completed with an execution status of success. Let's take a look at the S3 buckets. Here is the source bucket. Let's take another look at the documentation folder prefix. As a reminder, we can see that it contains PowerPoint, PDF, and other file types. Let's take a look at the target bucket. As you can see, the target only contains the contents of the documentation folder prefix. Furthermore, we have successfully filtered out the PowerPoint files. For additional information, we can also review the CloudWatch logs. We will simply click on Log Groups, select AWS DataSync, and choose the most recent task. You can see that a log entry was created for every object when it was transferred, and a second entry, which confirms the checksum and metadata of each object, has been verified. DataSync can be used for fully automated data transfers between any combination of supported AWS storage services, including cross-region replication of file systems or data transfers between file and object storage. Thank you for your time.